Are you looking for excitement, action, and cute girls? Then you need Neo White is about as close to a perfect game you can get. You might not like it, but the game achieves all it sets out to do and doesn't miss a beat. And that's just about the soundtrack. The game combines two opposing genres in an incredibly smooth way. And smooth is the name of the game. In that case, you should watch me wipe the floor with demons sometime. Meh, I'll pass. Neon White is the fusion between a fast-paced movement shooter and a visual novel. The smooth gameplay within the levels, the speed of which you can finish a map, and the puzzles required to master the game needs the linear story beats to allow a player a short respite before heading back into the mania. Well, looks like it's just you and me, bro! <laughs> <laughs> In fear of sounding like a video game journalist, Neo White has a little of something for everyone. Because it's a shooter, there's a sense of skill that can be honed by a player that satisfies some people. While the movement aspects allow others to optimize their routes and increase the speed of completion. Every level also has shortcuts that aren't initially clear because of the level design's structure. The shortcuts create a sense of intrigue and serve as a kind of puzzle for the player. Not only do you need to figure out where there are shortcuts, but also how to perform the shortcuts. You gain medals by completing a level quickly. The faster you are, the better the medal. Each medal gives you a reward for the map. Bronze medals make it possible to grab a gift within the level that is used in the visual novel part of the game. Silver medals conjure a ghost that reenact your fastest run thus far. Gold medals award you an extra neon rank, which we will talk about more later, as well as marking a shortcut within the map. Then there are the diamond or ace medals, which grant you access to the global leaderboards. Lastly, the most difficult medals is the blood medal or red ace medal. Its only purpose is to show off your mastery of a level and the time to beat is set by the developers themselves. Unlike the other medals, the time to beat isn't presented to the player, meaning you could be off by just a hundredth of a second and have no clue. Levels are presented to the player in chunks called missions. The length of a mission can vary and serve to move the story forwards. The game opens with Neon White arriving in glorious heaven! Not as an angel, but as a Neon, a mortal deemed as a sinner. We are swiftly introduced to the Believers, a communion that is supposedly working in the name of God. They present your task, killing demons in heaven. And to do that, you are also given a soul card. Soul cards work as weapons of different kinds. White's base card is a katana that befits his personality. Within the levels, you can pick up different soul cards with different weapons. The first basic examples are a handgun and assault rifle. However, every soul card comes with an extra feature. You shoot your weapon with a left click, but with a right click you discard the card to activate its special ability. For example, the handgun gives you an extra jump in the air, the rifle allows you to shoot a time detonated bomb, and the further in you get, you pick up new weapons with cool and unique abilities. Did I mention you can use the bombs to boost yourself higher up? Anyway. The Believers put on a competition for the Sinners, the Neons, to attempt to gain God's forgiveness by eliminating the most amount of demons in 10 days. The only problem? Neon White doesn't have any memories of his life, yet he's drawn towards three other Neons, Red, Violet and Yellow. As it turns out, the Believers have taken the currently strongest Neon 
and put him under their command. That neon is neon green. The story is presented through short dialogues within every mission, as well as the in-between visual novel sections between the missions. These sections allow you to talk with your friends, give them gifts, and learn more about your past by unlocking memories. Gifts are very important to learn about White's past, since giving gifts gains you insight. This bar shows how much insight you have to your relationship with all the characters, and as you fill it up by giving gifts, you learn more about the other character, get side quests that you can complete that test your creativity and weapon proficiency, as well as it brings back White's memories, completing the picture of his old life. The conversations you have can be a bit campy, but that's part of the charm. Kind of how the Resident Evil series has some slightly awkward dialogue. With references to modern pop culture, characters with anime archetype personalities, and some cringy jokes, it's fully understandable that someone might not enjoy it. But personally, I love it. What's all this commotion about? It's Pina Colada Day at the pool! <laughs> The jokes land for me because the game understands not to take itself too seriously. The characters are all in, the voice actors do a fantastic job at bringing them to life, and the style of all of them is executed perfectly. White tries to be a macho guy, but also has somewhat of a fragile ego that plays well with Red being a confident lady who likes to tease White. You really don't give up, do you? If you want me to get on my knees, I will. Violet is the youngster of the group and has an obsession with bombs and booby traps. She knows she's cute and uses her looks to get what she wants. Yellow is your frat bro. He's always got your back and not only does he look on the bright side, but he tries his best to keep a sense of calm. In many ways, they are all stereotypes. Characters you might find in a high school visual novel. But then, there's the hidden backstory that tells a darker and more impactful story. It tells the story about how Green took advantage of White and his friend's trust. Back in heaven, you meet Raz, an angel who tends a bar for neons, selling water. He swiftly becomes friends with White, and if you give him gifts, he'll give you some gifts too. There's also Mikey, the angel that serves you your missions. He is part friend and part mentor, and this is where your neon rank comes in. If you want to proceed to the next mission, you require a minimum neon rank, meaning you have to get at least gold medals in a certain amount of maps. This is how Neon White combines the gameplay of a fast-paced shooter with the laid backstory of a visual novel. Your skill directly impacts how far you can get in the game. The better you are, the more fun it is to play. The more fun it is to play, the better you get. It's a perfect loop of fun and player expression. Figuring out how to get your time lower is spurred on not only by the Neon rank, but as you start to understand a level, you become your own motivator to find other routes, ways to optimize your movement, and try many times to get a perfect run. The more gifts you get, the further you can explore your relations with other characters, leading to you wanting to collect more gifts so you can learn more, and so on. Neon White has found a way to connect a genre of gameplay with another genre of storytelling while still executing both masterfully. And if you're still not hooked, it's got one of the best grappling hooks in any game. Need I say more? If you were hooked by this video, shoot that subscribe button and dash into the like button. My name is Turtlekin. Remember to eat well, sleep well, and I'll see you in the next video.